This video is sponsored by Snapdragon. Not too long ago, Apple released their M-Series chipsets on their lineup of laptops. And that Apple M-Series lineup of chipsets, which are using this new architecture, has caused quite a stir in the world of computing. Now, if you're not familiar, there is a newer architecture for computer chips that is different than the much more common x86 architecture that most laptops run on. Without getting into too much detail, nowadays, this newer architecture is generally considered to be better at performance per watt, aka higher performance while utilizing less power, because of the way that it handles delivering instructions from the software to the chipset itself. And we're now regularly seeing it beat out x86 chipsets in terms of just pure performance even. And so we've all sort of been wondering when Windows will finally get a new architecture-based custom chipset of its own and gain all of the benefits of performance and battery life along with it. And well, now we might just have it. Last year, Qualcomm teased their new CPU and even gave it a name, Qualcomm Orion. This year at Snapdragon Summit, we finally got to see this Qualcomm Orion. Qualcomm first showed us some impressive metrics about the new CPUs, including single-threaded CPU performance beating out Apple's M2 Max apparently in a benchmark, and matching performance at 30% less power. The same kind of story beating out Intel's i9-13980HK chipset and matching it at 70% less power. The CPU is going to be first featured on the new Snapdragon X Elite chipset, specifically designed for computers. On that chipset, there are 12 Qualcomm Orion CPUs clocked in at 3.0 8 gigahertz and they are laid out in three clusters of four cores each. Now these are all high performance cores and there's no separate efficiency cores like there are with their current mobile chipsets. Instead, based on the cluster design, it's assumed that they can probably shut down the different clusters as needed to save power that way instead. Something else kind of clever, the Qualcomm Orion CPUs can boost two cores together and hit 4.3 gigahertz, the first ever CPU based on this new architecture to do so. And all of this is super impressive, but the CPU is just one part of the chipset. And Qualcomm is making sure to give these new cores proper company by boosting all the other parts of the SoC as well. So our Orion CPUs are connected to the fastest type of RAM available, LPDDR5X. I also have a decoder deep dive on RAM if you're curious, I'll link that below. And that is also connected to the other systems like the latest gen Adreno GPU, which is Qualcomm's own custom GPU they've had for a while now. And they showed some equally impressive figures they have on that, including two times performance gains over the i7-1380H integrated GPU and matching its performance at 74% less power. And then it's also connected to a hugely beefed up Hexagon NPU, or Neural Processing Unit, which is Qualcomm's specific processing unit for AI-based tasks. The Tensor Accelerator block part of this, for example, is 2.5 times faster than the last gen, and we have a two times larger shared memory slash cache, something Qualcomm has been improving upon further and further with every chipset that they've been making for years now, really. And so the claims here for AI performance are as expected, even more impressive, including hitting 75 tops or trillions of operations per second for the Snapdragon X Elite utilizing all of the chipset and 45 tops on the NPU alone of the chipset. Also, it is worth noting that the new Qualcomm Orion CPUs are also going to be coming to their Snapdragon 8 mobile chipsets next year, which will be interesting for sure. Since we got to see the impressive in its own right Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset that launched alongside the Snapdragon X Elite at this year's Snapdragon Summit, their big event for the year, it already has 30% faster CPU, 25% faster GPU, and a 98% faster NPU over last year. Lastly, there is one other big part of the puzzle that we need to discuss as we'll have a huge impact on our computers and our phones in conjunction with the new chipsets and CPUs. I do feel that this, this generation of AI, Gen AI, you know, has, I think, the potential to be, quite frankly, as big as, say, the global revolution that you're very much part of, or the cloud revolution, or you know, the web and the PCs, that class. What Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, just said is something we need to talk about because generative AI is gonna show up more and more in our applications, on our computers, and our phones. And this is something that Qualcomm is betting on this year. As they're positioning both the new Snapdragon X Elite with the new Qualcomm Orion CPUs, and the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipsets as being able to handle these generative AI models completely on device even, easily, and without needing to go to the cloud at all which is better for privacy, but also importantly, performance too. And honestly, I'm someone who has kind of just started using generative AI stuff within my own workflow, like Photoshop's generative AI expand feature when I needed a vertical image from my otherwise horizontal thumbnail that I took. These are not real pants. 
No one noticed. As well as using automatic generative AI captions for my reels in DaVinci Resolve, the editing program that I use, and even telling Resolve to use generative AI to transcribe all of the audio and all of the clips I have so that I can then search through them all for specific words to get to the points in those clips where that word was said instead of having to scrub through footage for hours. And so, during Snapdragon Summit, I've been honestly excited when we even got to see some pretty cool real-world demos of various on-device AI-powered processes running on the new chipsets and in some cases on the new Qualcomm Orion CPUs. Now we saw a bunch of demos, but some of the ones that stood out particularly to me were one, for example, where we saw a demo on a reference device with the new Snapdragon X Elite chipset in it that could generate images using prompts in under a second compared to the much longer time that the cloud-based Photoshop does. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 reference device we saw could even do the stable diffusion demo in under a second as well. There was also a demo with generative expand, like what I mentioned I used on the thumbnail, running on another reference device with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 inside and was able to do that faster than the cloud-based version as well. We also had a full-blown chat GPT-like interactive assistant that you can ask questions to and get full answers from, again, faster and running entirely on the device, which kind of shows how Copilot, the chat GPT-based new assistant in Windows that Satya was referencing in his interview, might utilize the new CPUs to do, as well as the full AI stack of the chipset, of course. And even Resolve was here. They showed a demo running Magic Mask, which is a tool that you would use to mask out a person, for example, automatically, instead of having to cut them out frame by frame, which is how you used to have to do it when you wanted to edit them separately from the rest of the scene. And it was running a lot faster on the Snapdragon X Elite system, side by side with another Windows competitor chipset. They even showed us Snapdragon Seamless, their own solution to allow any device to easily communicate with each other, so earbuds can jump between the computer and phone easily, file sharing between them all works too, and it's open to all manufacturers on Android and Windows, which is something Windows laptops traditionally sorely miss compared to their Apple counterparts. It's a little thing, but it's important. Okay, honestly, between the new Qualcomm Orion CPUs, as well as the focus on generative AI that will absolutely become a bigger and bigger part of our everyday use of our laptops in so many ways, this whole event kind of got me super excited to check out all of this on real Windows laptops, hopefully coming out soon in 2024. But there we go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you want to learn more about what Qualcomm is up to, check out the link in the description below. It has been a long trip though, and I am still jet lagged and six hours ahead of the time here. So I'm going to bed. Good night. A truck backing up. And so we all, what is that sound? It's rolling a TV. They're actually circling me with the TV now. Start over here. You can't make this stuff up. Clocked in it. Waves. Mother nature itself. We need to discuss the bird. The bird.